we're going to go ahead and, and get started with the webinar. Again, uh, we should be under 20 minutes on this. So we hear the term reputation management a lot. It's a little um, murky, I think. And what we want to do in the next few minutes is kind of dis demystify that. You do have an online reputation. It's something. And there's consequences, <clears throat> excuse me, there's consequences to that reputation your insurance agency has or benefits. Kind of could go either way. So I'm Kevin McDonald with Confluency Solutions. With us, we also have Ken Kramers, our National Sales Director. Um, we may hear from Ken as we get to the end of this, uh, the Q&A uh, portion of the agenda. So three questions we want to answer. What is reputation management? Um, do we really, why should we care about it? And then uh, finally, how do you manage your agency's reputation, uh, your insurance agency's reputation for business benefit? So there's two components to your online reputation. Your visibility, your presence, do you show up when people do searches? And you do at least sometimes. It could be a product related search or service, risk management, car insurance, business insurance. Uh, could be people just looking for information, you pop up. And then branded searches is another kind of search, people really looking for you. They're searching on your name or some variation. And the other component to that online reputation is once you do appear, how do you look? So um, there are two facets to both of those things, whether you show up and then how you look. Your NAP data, NAP, name, address, phone number, really your website's part of that, but it's not a, um, it's, it's not a, um, it's not a good um, acronym, so that we kind of leave that out. But your NAP data and then the reviews that show up online, and they kind of work hand in hand. So they have a role, both of those things have a role in search visibility. For instance, let's look at a screenshot here. This is a search, uh, Google search for insurance agent, Chicago, Illinois. So there's a couple of different components to this results page. Up in the top is a uh, local search results. Used to be called the carousel um, you, in, a couple months ago, um, August 6th and prior. Google would display seven results here. They changed that on August 7th. Um, there's different reasons that people have speculated about. Google doesn't really tell you everything that's on their mind, why they're doing what they're doing, but they do make changes all the time. So now there's three results there. And below that, uh, also on page one, localized organic results. So how do you appear in here? How do you, what, what is your NAP data and reviews? How does this, um, it could be your Google Plus Business profile, your Google My Business profile. It gets you in here. Uh, your website pages might show up here and reviews on other websites like Yelp and Facebook. In fact, the one in the middle with the stars, I believe that's a Facebook rating, or excuse me, a Yelp rating that's making an appearance in the results here. And it could be online directory. So there's a multiplicity of ways in which you can show up for sort of product and service related searches. Uh, most of those factors, let me go back to that slide for just a second, most of those factors have nothing to do with your website, at least not directly, right? And a lot of the things that return in search results are not your website. So increasingly, it's kind of, you don't necessarily get to tell your story, or you, you still can tell your story, but there's other people telling it, there's other people that are kind of putting you out there right, of the third-party website. So most of the search visibility, not most of it, but a significant portion, a really important portion, is off your website. The factors that drive that are off your website. This is uh, some data from a study that gets conducted uh, periodically by Moz.com. What are those factors that drive what Google does, decides to display in the localized organic results and in the pack or the, the old carousel results? And there's a bunch of them, as you can see. And really, uh, the localized organic results are a little closer to kind of what you would think of as traditional SEO. So the, the biggest cut of that is link signals, uh, inbound links from other websites. That's a huge factor in Google's algorithm. But the rest of this stuff, you know, review signals, social signals, behavior, mobility, when people, when you show up in a mobile search, do people actually do something Google can measure? Do they click the call? Do they click on the website? Do they click on the profile? So there's all these different things that are off of your website. But the fact is that you can control the majority of them to your benefit. So there's 16% uh, of kind of this determination about whether you show up is that NAP data. 
So your name, address, phone number, website, you show up in hundreds of places across the web. We track about 300 with our RepMan service. Um, and they could be, again, online directories, local search engines like Google+. Plus. Could be things like your, the agency locators for your insurance companies or the, the big eye, things like that. So you show up in lots of places. It's really important that you claim your Google uh, profile for your business, for your, for your insurance agency. Make sure you get the right categories. Make sure you get your information in there so that Google sees there's some, you know, something to kind of latch on to. Review signals are important. That's a credibility factor for Google. Social signals are important. Again, credibility factor. And the behavior and mobility signals, whether people actually act when you show up in mobile search, is heavily influenced by the presence of reviews. So you kind of have to count reviews twice. And, and this adds up to more than half of the factors, a lot of things you can't control. We, we mentioned branded searches. I mentioned branded searches early on in one of the uh, first slides. It's just a search on your name. And if you could uh, if you take a look at your analytics, uh, you'll see that the largest proportion of search traffic that comes to your website is coming from a branded search, some variation on your name. Um, Geico doesn't give us access to their analytics. I wish they did. That would be interesting to look at. But I can tell you, with, um, I, would, I would bet my dog on it, you, you will see the same thing with them. Branded searches are the, the largest proportion of search traffic. And that's because you know Geico does a bunch of broadcast advertising, print advertising, and then people go to their browser on their phone or get their laptop out or whatever, and they just type in Geico in the search bar. So they're really not searching. They heard about Geico somewhere, but it looks like a search to Google, and, and it, in fact, it is a search. It's called a branded search. The dynamics are a little different for you as a local business. Maybe you're doing some advertising, and that drives people to look for you and learn a little bit more about you. Maybe they got a referral. Uh, somebody got a referral from a friend, neighbor, coworker, whatever. Maybe you met somebody at a rotary meeting, but often, again, people will just go to their phone and you know, pull up the browser, take a look, try to learn a little bit more about you, decide, you know, do I want to do business with you? So when they do find you, when they do look for you that way and find you, you kind of have to ask yourself, how does that drive by look? They're just going to kind of do a you know, cursory review of who you are. How does that look? So here's an example of a branded search for an agency out in the Seattle area. The red arrows are um, really unnecessary, but they're there. And what they're pointing to are a whole bunch of five-star ratings. So if you look at this, that looks pretty good. This agency will get a lot of calls, a lot of click-throughs, because the reviews validate them. So I don't, and I don't have to work too hard at this. I can, the stars jump right out at me. The other thing you'll notice is it isn't just one or two reviews. It's 21 reviews, five reviews nine reviews, right? And, and it's a diversity. It's across a bunch of different platforms, which is good. So they're dominating first page of results. The reputation looks pretty good. How important are those reviews, really? Um, the st statistic isn't up here, but th there's data that shows that people trust online reviews um, about as much as they trust direct referrals from friends, neighbors, you know, the old traditional word of mouth kind of thing. The fact is most people read reviews now. They look at them at least uh, some of the time, and, and most people really most of the time now. Most uh, people won't do business with a one, two, or you know, three-star rated business, particularly if there are four or five-star options out there. And the other thing that's um, important to pay attention to is people really don't place a lot of stock in older reviews. So, you know, we've worked with agencies and they'll do a project and they'll, they'll garner, you know, 20, 25 reviews in a short period of time. Um, and there's a couple problems with that. One is Google may not display those because it doesn't look natural. It looks like something is going on. We're gaming the system. Better to have a flow, something we call velocity. So just kind of control the velocity of, of reviews. Um, the other thing is, unless you continue to do that, those reviews start to age, and within a few months, they start to lose their power. They lose their validity with cons other consumers that might be looking for you. Um, another thing to take note of, I think this could be really important, is that Google has added a filter. So when you look at local results, you can filter out businesses by, you know, if it's a restaurant or something, by price. Um, but one of those filters is by reviews. So for instance, Here's a screenshot 
for uh, search for restaurants in Charlotte, North Carolina. And as you can see, we can filter this by, you know, two stars and up, three stars and up, four stars and up. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't have a lot of interest in eating in a two-star restaurant. I probably wouldn't look at that. So this is kind of rolling out industry by industry. It's not come to insurance yet, and it may not. There's Again, there's no telling what Google will choose to do. Um, but I don't think it's really worth rolling the dice. You have to ask yourself, you know, what if they did come to the insurance kind of searches tomorrow? Where would we be? And if you don't have any reviews or if you got a couple of reviews and they're not so great, um, you, you're going to get excluded from the game. You're not going to not going to get a chance to play in that lead capture game. So uh, reviews are important there, and they're likely to be more important um, as we move forward in time. So there's a bunch of factors people look at when uh, judging a business based on reviews. What are those? The overall star rating, that's the thing that's really easy to latch onto. It just jumps off the page at you. Quantity of reviews, I think you probably are, are like me. If I go and you know I'm looking at a product on Amazon, and it's got one review, it doesn't really mean much to me. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't mean much to me. Right? But if there's 20 reviews, then the sentiment of those reviews, good, bad, happy, sad, whatever, um, that starts to mean something and have an influence on me and, and other consumers as well. The age of reviews, we mentioned that as they get a little older, um, they start to lose their credibility. And this last one is really important. That It's important that you engage with people that are doing reviews, whether they're good or bad. They're good. Just you know, thank the reviewer for feedback. Let them know how important it is to you, and you can do that on the platform: Google Plus, Yelp, City Search, wherever the review's been placed. Um, if it's a bad review, you should respond as well. You don't want to get into an argument with somebody out there on a public forum, and doesn't doesn't look good for anybody. But often there's another side to the story. If you can tell it in a diplomatic way, sometimes there's a true breakdown in your service. Um, and if it's something you fixed, you recognize and have addressed, tell that story. You get a lot of mileage out of that. If you can identify whoever uh, placed the, the bad review out there, the unfavorable review, um, get in touch with them and see if you can make it right. And often you can get them to revise or rescind the review. So responding is really important. So we talked a little bit about what reputation management is. Hopefully we cleared it up a little bit there. Why it matters. I think, it, I think we kind of made a case for that. And so then finally, how do you manage it? So I'm going to talk about um, our reputation management service. It's part of our RepMan service. And the fact is, I mean, you can, you can do this without having a, a service to manage this. You can go to Yelp and Google Plus, and you can check every day for reviews, and you can solicit for reviews and things like that, but it's just easier if you have a tool, that, and it's easier for me to illustrate what how this works if we just kind of do it in the context of our uh, RepMan service. So the RepMan service, this is a screenshot of the dashboard, and it's, it does a number of different things. Um, local and hyper-local SEO, competitor monitoring, there's some uh, we'll do it for you levels options with this. But um, maybe that's for another webinar. I want to focus just on the kind of the reputation intelligence, reputation management aspect of this. So let's go to the reviews panel. So when this is connected, when this is all set up, if somebody does a review today, you're going to get an email today. doesn't matter where it's done, whether it's Google+, Plus, um, Facebook, you, you'll get a notification. It'll give you the opportunity to respond to that review. You can do it all from one place. You don't have to log in separately to the different platforms, right? And you, as you're trying to capture reviews and, and get your reputation out there, um, you can monitor your progress as you go. So quality, how are we doing out of five stars is a quick look at that. Diversity over on the right, are we getting reviews across a bunch of different platforms? Uh, that's good. Uh, it validates you with Google and helps you with your visibility in search. But again, also with consumers, they can see there's a lot of reviews coming from a lot of places, a lot more credibility there. And then the quantity in each review is, is right here. I can see... Um, you know, what is we're getting, and I can respond to those things. How do you get reviews? Um, you know, people will do them here and there, but you want to you, you want to try and manage that. It's, it's best to kind of finesse this. You can do one-off emails. Uh, we have a web page widget that will allow people who are, you know, perusing your website to kind of do a review there on the spot. And then we also have a process 
that we'll do for you or we'll kind of tell you how we do it and give you the email copy if you want to do it yourself for new clients. And the fact is you should really do all three of these things, kind of set all three of these things up to get that, you know, that velocity, that flow of reviews. So the one-off emails, this is uh, from the reviews panel. There's a, um, an email we can edit in here and just kind of click and send whenever these opportunities come up. And the opportunities would be you just delivered a service. You just help somebody with their claim. They're happy. You did whatever, you know. Um, you, there are people who are in your corner anyway. Ask them for reviews. And there will be a link in this email. It will go to your review page. Um, you can do this also from your agency management system. And for most of us on this call, that probably makes more sense than coming to the Repman dashboard because you're in your agency management system all the time anyway. So you just set the email up in there, send out the one-offs as the opportunities come up. The web page widget, and we can put this on any web page, um, doesn't really matter what the website is, what the page is. So the first panel, this is what everybody will see, this is all they'll see initially, is write a review. Give us some stars, give us a little bit of feedback. If it's four or five stars, what they'll see is the second panel. So we're going to filter out the people who are less happy. So if they're happy, four or five stars, we're going to say, hey, maybe you'd like to share that on Yelp, Google, you know, Facebook. Click and they'll, they'll be taken there. If they're not so happy, uh, if it's one to three stars, they won't see that screen. They'll see panel number three. Thanks for your feedback. We appreciate it. You'll get an email notification. You'll have an opportunity to respond, but they won't be asked to share that anywhere. That's kind of the end of it. Right? So we're kind of filtering out the, the happy and the less happy people. The way the review generator uh, works, um, again, it's a process we can implement for you or we'll just give you the, the process and you can implement it. There's kind of a new client nurture aspect to this. So we've all read this, we know this. We want to kind of reinforce that purchase decision and when you do that, you get you know, some additional sales, some account sales, you get more referrals, you, some general goodness comes with it. So the sequence we send out, if you send us your new client list each month, right, just once a month is plenty, uh, just a thank you. Thank you for doing business with us, for choosing our agency. Don't forget, here's some other things we do. Here's how you get in touch with us. If there's an emergency, whatever, right? That's the first email. That's it. A few days later, we'd send an email out that says, you know, we think we do a pretty good job, but we don't want to assume that. We would like you to tell us how your experience was click this link and you can give us a you know, quick review. And then that'll go to the widget page. Uh, the third email goes out a few days after that. Again, thanks, we're happy, we're happy we could help you. Um, if you know anybody else we can help, you know, let us know, send them our way, have them tell us that you sent them so that we can you know, thank you. And again, here's some of the things we do. And then the fourth one may or may not be relevant but if you're doing an e-newsletter, if we're doing our RPG email marketing for you, you want to let people know that more emails are going to be on the way in the future, that, that presumptive opt-in. By doing that, it gives them, a, it kind of just puts them on notice, gives them a chance to opt out if they want. Most people won't, um, but it'll keep your list cleaner. It'll keep the unsubscribes down. It'll keep the um, the complaint, the spam complaint rates down. It'll keep you in compliance with can spam, right? And, and keep your whatever email service you're using, it'll um, keep that up and running because you can get shut down if there's too many uh, complaints or uh, things like that. So that fourth email may or may not be applicable depending on whether we're doing the newsletter. So if you use the RepMan dashboard, what does it cost? Um, we're doing a special right now for the next 30 days. There's no setup, there's no commitment. The monthly is $29. Um, and if that's all you want, that's fine. We'll give you the, the, you know, the review generator information. You can send those out. Uh, we'll do it for you for twenty dollars a month if you want to do that. So if we do everything, we do that part for you, and you have the dashboard, forty nine a month. So that includes a number of other things besides the um, the reputation intelligence, as we've pointed out. And we'll probably we'll get into that in some other webinars. If you're interested, you know, let me know. Let Ken know. Um, and we can kind of give you a walkthrough on that. So uh, if you have RepMan already, or uh, the, you, you'll get the widget. Um, you'll hear from us separately on that, you know, where we'll put it, when we'll do it. Um, if you have one of our bundles, so 
the rep man concierge service, the social marketing one or two, step into growth, the, the growth booster, whichever one it is, you're going to get rep man and uh, with it. So you'll 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 get these things. You'll hear from us separately on that as well. Got ahead of myself a slide. It's like the third time that's happened. Okay, so there's Ken's contact information, ken at cfluent.com. Um, that's the phone number, extension one. Uh, I'll get a copy of this slide set out to you in the next day or two. Um, as I mentioned, we're recording each of these webinars that we're doing, and we'll keep the best recording. And uh, we'll make that recording available as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions. I see we've got a handful that have come in. And we'll stick around for a little bit. Uh, if you have to leave now, uh, understand completely. We'll get the uh, Q&A information out to you as well when we do the follow-up. Thanks, everybody.